Welcome back to Gano Control Podcast. I am your host, Ronick. And before I introduce my special guest today, I want to give a special shout out to our sponsors that helped this episode be possible. Mayfresh Shop. Mayfresh Shop is a graffiti shop located inside the Lamo Endor Swamit. They offer high quality graffiti supply, art supply, and custom airbrush. So make sure to check them out at Mayfresh Shop. Also, want to give a shout out to our official spray can sponsor here at Gano Control. 360. 360 is a spray paint company that is manufactured and distributed out of Mexico, and they aim to offer high quality spray paint to all spray paint enthusiasts. So make sure to check them out at 360 California. And with that being said, I want to give a special welcome to my guest today, Explode. How you doing today, brother? Doing well. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Another day. Happy to be alive. Exactly. So let's hop into this, brother. Um... How was it growing up for Explode at home, and how was the upbringing? Uh, I mean, as a child, my upbringing was pretty good. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up in Anaheim, California. Shout out to Anaheim. Anaheim, right? So I'm um, in a suburban neighborhood. Okay. You know, um, really into skateboarding, punk rock. Dope. You know. And how was how was at home? How was the environment at home? Like in home, what were you? Do you come from a big family, or is it just you and maybe like one or two siblings? Oh, I mean, I have. I grew up with my mom and my dad, and okay. I had my brother, who's a couple years younger than me. Yeah. And then, I mean, things were pretty good, and then they eventually got a divorce, and I think that's when things kind of maybe changed a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And do you think those changes? kind of opened up your mind to start becoming creative in your own way? Um, no, I think I've always been a creative person. Okay. Yeah. And how did your creativity start? What are your early beginnings of being creative? Uh, for me, to be honest, I I grew up, I, I was born in 73. So, okay. So in the 70s, there was a lot of shows that, that really influenced me. Definitely. Even like, even like, I used to watch this show called That's Cat. Okay. That was filled with like photo montages. It seemed like it was created by hippies. Okay. <laughs> you know, there is Sigmund the Sea Monster. You yeah, know? yeah. Like we had the Groovy Ghoulies and then Sesame Street. But I, what I noticed was all the lettering, all the hand drawn lettering and all the, the hand drawn animation. Oh, okay. And that really inspired me. And did that get you to start doing letters yourself and, and minor animation? Or did you start kind of just doodling? Um, I always enjoy drawing. Okay. And I think I got an appreciation for letters as I started getting into like, like third or fourth grade. Okay. And and going to school, did you ever run into another classmate or maybe met a friend that was kind of also trying to be creative? Uh, I mean, like we all kind of like, I mean, there was different students that would draw. Okay. I mean, like in, in grade school, I mean... I, I had a fascination with old fashioned cars. So I'd, okay. I would draw cars. Oh, nice. <laughs> what kind of cars yeah. were kind of fantasy? Oh, I mean, like real, like the old, I don't know what years. I'm not really a car person. <laughs> but as long as they're old. Like old Model Ts. That okay. Are, you know? And at what age, bro, do you start kind of like looking into other artists and be kind of like, you know what, I kind of feel inspired by this guy? Well, I would have to say like sec, well, more going, I'd probably be third grade. Third grade. It's a combination of things. It, it was, I started discovering music on my own. And okay. So I would listen to a show called Dr. Demento. Okay. And he had called kind of like these parodies. Okay. Like songs. Yeah. But he also threw in some punk songs. Definitely. So that kind of like influenced me. And then at the same time, I remember watching Style Wars. Okay. On PBS. And I kind of tripped out on that because it just, it just seemed like something so foreign to me. Like there was not... I grew up in a suburb, so yeah. like it, it, there was, it wasn't metropolitan. Okay, we didn't really have like subway. We didn't have subways. Right? We yeah, didn't yeah. have pieces on subways or <laughs> tagging or graffiti in the streets in that sense. You know, that's interesting though how they just air it to, through PBS, kind of like letting all all the children watch mm -hmm. it to understand what's going on in another part of the world that's not home. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then at that time in, in grade school, they would bring us into like the multi-purpose room. Okay. And we'd actually watch film, you know, and we'd watch these documentaries on film. So it kind of seemed reminiscent to what I was seeing there. But it was fascinating just to see what was going on. Okay. And I had no relation to it, but I just remember like really being inspired by it. 
Definitely. You know, so it just always caught my eye. And I kind of, like, with my when I was a kid, liking Sesame Street, and it was always in an urban setting. Yeah. You know, and just seeing the way that they would, like, draw, like, say, the numbers. And then the cans, yeah. having the cans, the subways. Yeah, you know. Or, you know <laughs> and then I, you know, in the late 70s, my, my dad would always watch the news, like, religiously at okay. 5 o'clock. So I always got, like, snippets of graffiti in the streets, you know, like, yeah. what's going on in New York or punk rock, you know, because punk rock was such a big influence on in my life. But, like, I can remember, you know, like, hearing about the Sex Pistols okay. on the news or you'll hear about crime or you hear about, like, yeah, you know, like, these these young punks like terrorizing communities or you hear you know just so it was always on in the background so i kind of absorbed that kind of like just a little kid in the bag yeah just i could be <laughs> doing homework or playing or drawing or something but i was i was like hearing that at the same time and is it fair to say that wild style was like the very first introduction of style writing hip-hop style graffiti to you uh well it was style wars but yeah i didn't i didn't really watch um I didn't watch Wild Style until later, until okay. like the early 90s. Okay, and at, at what point do you um, come face-to-face -face with graffiti with your own two eyes? Well, with graffiti, so, you know, as as a kid, like, you know, in grade school, we were I was skateboarding a lot. And yeah. then we would also go down to the beach, and then we would take, like, sex wax. Okay. Right? So, like, the surfers would always be, car you know, writing things on the sidewalk. So okay. we do the same kind of things when we're, like, when we're, like, Using the sex wax to like yeah. on the curbs. Okay. And then we write like punk rock stuff, you know. But then I also like in the, like where I grew up, there was a lot of stoner graffiti. Okay. A lot of like people like writing Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. But then we also had a lot of punk rock graffiti. Then we had like you know people would confess their love on the walls. Which, Baby, I'm gonna love you forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, and that was also an inspiration too, just to see. And then there's like the the prank aspect of it and the vandal, yeah, the vandal aspect of it. So, but I mean, growing up in Orange County, there's a lot of youth culture. Okay. And a lot of youth culture, like using graffiti as a way to like communicate. Got you. Aside from like you know, like there wasn't so much like someone writing a name. Okay. You know, I didn't learn that until until the mid '80s. Okay. But I, I remember, like, in fifth grade, we were, like, in Anaheim, there's some barrios in Anaheim that, that go back to the 40s. Okay. And I remember seeing the letters ATC on a wall. Okay. And it didn't really resonate with me. I didn't really know what it was. But then one of the, one of the kids in my class, he had it written on his folder. And I asked him, I'm like, what is that? And he said, well, my dad's in this gang, you know, Ana Anaheim Traveler City. And I was like, whoa. Like, I think it was at that moment that I yeah. kind of, like, understood the power okay of graffiti and how was Anaheim at this time when you say you, you came across atc you say atc right yes it's like one of the gangs but it wasn't so much in my neighborhood okay like well like where i, I kind of so like where i grew up there's a main boulevard state college boulevard okay and then i live between la palma and lincoln but state college boulevard for many years going back to the hot rod era there was yeah. a lot of cruising Okay. So they used to cruise and cruise down to this burger spot called Angelo's. Gotcha. With their hot rods. But then that later became a spot where people would be like cruising mini trucks and okay. start with, with base heavy like trucks. And did you ever take part in, in that type of stuff? No, and no, I was too young, but I would always go like, and we, we would, you know, if I was having dinner with my parents, we would like watch them cruise. Oh, okay. You could hear the bass, you know, you could hear <laughs> the bass. And then also like, I mean, maybe like a half mile from where we live, there was a nightclub called Jezebel's. Okay. And it was kind of a, like a heavy metal glam okay. bar or club in, in Anaheim. Like, there's footage on YouTube of like Metallica playing there in 84, but they had all kinds of rock bands. So on a good night, you would get all the heavy metal, heavy metalers in the neighborhood. You might get some punk rockers walking around. You yeah. Got, you got the cruising going on and then... Where I lived, there like there was a house where there was like a punk rocker. So you got his friends, and then on the other side of me, there's like some mods. Okay. So yeah, yeah, there, it was interesting. Like I said, you kid across the street from me, like Kiss. So there was so much like culture around me. And just being young and absorbent, it must just, have been a great thing. Yeah, and then you know, to me, it kind of resolved like revolved around music. Like I wasn't that good at skating, but like I would pick up Thrasher magazine. And okay. I would see the graffiti in the ditches and washes. So you were were you around for when the when the skateboards were like longer than what they are now, 
And they well, I mean, the, my first yeah, no, my, I was like more in the mid '80s. Like okay. my first real skateboard was Mark Gonzalez. But, okay, gotcha. You know, and it wasn't. They weren't too long. Yeah, because I know I've seen like the the movie Dogtown, and I know they got these big old. Oh board yeah, game. no, that's <laughs> I was just a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is it fair to say that your very first introduction to any sort of graffiti was punk rock graffiti? I would say like stoner graffiti, seventies graffiti, okay. and then later. That would be in the 70s. Okay. And as we get into the 80s, then you start seeing more punk rock graffiti. Okay. You know, mixed in, like, depending on where we were in the city, there might be some gang graffiti. I gotcha. mean, that really didn't carry on over all over. They didn't, like, really paint all, all over Anaheim. Okay. You know, and then I had a friend for a while that was doing these really cool stencils of punk rock bands that would spray paint them. And they were kind of small and low pro. So, like, yeah. you always had, like, these landmark spots. And it was just it was just the name of a band? Yeah, like a like band, like Final Conflict. Okay. You know, it would be a Final Conflict stencil that spray paint somewhere or a Crash Conflict. For anybody out there that will watch this that doesn't understand what punk rock graffiti is, can you kind of speak a little bit about what it was? I mean, and punk, what was the message punk, behind yeah, it? Yeah, well, I mean, punk graffiti. I mean, like, I think when you're young, like, you just want to, like, in, you just want everyone to know, you know, like, you're excited about the music, you know. So okay. like, there's there's that kind of punk rock, mu like, graffiti, like, where you would, um, like, write a band's name, like, Black Flag, Circle Jerks, you know. Okay. In my neighborhood, there was there was a band called Fatal Belief, White Mice. You know? Okay. Those were bands that that would spray paint. Okay. You might see abolish APD, Fuck Authority. And they would spray paint like walls or what were they spray Yeah, they just spray paint the walls, you know. They, like, <laughs> you know, like what else is there to do? So they go out, there's a lot of house parties going on. So then, you know, like someone would spray paint a wall. Oh, okay. So it, it wasn't kind of like, hey, this is my punk crew and screw your punk crew over there. Yeah, no, there's no, no okay. crews. It's just like, you know, I remember like I go to bed on a Friday and then I wake up Saturday morning to go outside and ride my bike and then you might see punk's not dead like spray paint. Oh, wall, okay. You know? I hear you now. You know, and that kind of piqued my interest, you know, because I started seeing that. And did you take part in that? Like, were you painting punk rock mm, yourself or no? Not so much. I mean, going into high school, like ninth grade, I probably, I did a lot, you know. We lived in an apartment and I would okay. tag, you know, all kinds of punk slogans or bands. You know? And what high school was this? I went to Catella High School. Catella. Yeah. Okay. And was yeah. the graffiti scene uh, active at, at Catella or was it kind of oh. like barely starting? Well, yeah, there wasn't really a scene. I mean, so so where I went to elementary school, yeah, it was I'd probably say it was predominantly like white, but there was okay. also other other races that went there. Okay, but then when I went to junior high, I went to a school that was a little bit more rough. So it was there was more gangs there, and, and it was like I think predominantly Latino. Okay. Right, so when we went to orientation to go to junior high, we they they kind of convinced all of us from our school to get involved in like out like extracurricular activities and programs, you know, like to student, keep it away student from student body, that. ASB yeah. sports, right, just yeah. to keep us from getting in trouble, okay, or you know getting jumped or you know just getting involved in the school and the faculty. So then when I went to junior high, it was like it was like night and day from my elementary school. Oh, okay, I hear you. Right, so. You know, and even being involved in all of these programs really didn't protect you from getting jumped. I hear you. You know, and so in seventh grade, my locker, I had a bottom locker, and then above me was, like, a the leader of Total Pleasure Boys, which was, like, a party crew. Okay. You know, and at that time, there was a lot of party crews, so you would see, like, flyers. Gotcha. With different crews. and Come like to my party. party. Yeah. yeah, you know. <laughs> but then I was, like, the skinny little white boy that had to, like, kind of, like, maneuver his way down to his locker. Okay. You know, and then I started noticing, like, this kid that I went, he was a year older than me, so he was in eighth grade. Yeah. His, his name was, he would write Crazy D. Crazy he, D. He, he was crazy, but he was, <laughs> but th this kid would write Crazy D with a ballpoint pen. He would write all over his arms, all over his face. Yeah. You know, and then there would be time, and then where I went to, I went to junior high school at Sycamore. And then okay. in the soccer field, there were like early graffiti pieces, like full color burners. Oh, there was burners. And and Crazy D was one of them, right? So he wrote Crazy D West Coast Kings. And then you you could see him walking with his ladder and spray paint, you know, like yeah. nobody really said anything to him. And kind of, there was there was a community feel like where I, where I grew up, you know, okay. like people were involved. So like everyone knew of him. Yeah. From grade school. Okay. And so I feel like in that time, that would have been like 86. 87 era let me take a quick step uh, back before we move forward so 
going into uh, school, what would what would be the cause for you to get jumped? Was it because it was predominantly another race at school? Or was um, it? Yeah, I mean, I, maybe just because we're vulnerable. Okay. Right? <laughs> There's like, I remember like when the school got out, like there was a window of opportunity to get home without getting messed with. Okay. But then once like the high school, once our like high school siblings got out of school and then picked up their brother or sister or friends at the at the junior high school. Yeah. Right? Then they then all of a sudden they start to cruise around looking for trouble, you know? So like Oh, so you just look at the wrong guy and hey, it's, it's you know problem. Like, you know, so I fi- I try to like do I, I, I chose the name Schizo and then I came up with a tag and then I would like draw like a Playboy bunny with the surf, like a surf surfer in the background with a wave breaking or like a skateboard ramp. Okay. And then I would just start started like doing letters and just writing schizo as a way of like a form of protection from getting from getting jumped, right? So kind of like giving your identity, like, hey, I'm not no jump. Yeah, yeah, creating an yeah. identity, like, kind of like, you know. Okay. And the crazy, do you have any involvement and in you pursuing that? No, watching well, it? Well, I knew a crazy dude was like, like I said, it was, it, I kind of made two and two together, like what, when, what I saw in Style Wars and what he was doing. Okay. But still, like, they're really, like, graffiti wasn't really defined at that time. Okay. You know, like, no, like the police aren't pulling him over for painting a wall. They didn't really know what to do with it. And then that year, so in that year, there was a, there was a punk band in the neighborhood called Doggy Style, and they put out Side by Side. Okay. And then that 12-inch, it says, like, someone painted, like, Doggy Style. Yeah. It looked graffiti with, like, the, on a brick wall with these skateboards. And so that, that really became an influence to me. Okay. And then it's like, you know, it's like you kind of have to seek it out. There's no internet. So you kind of have to do the research. And then, and it's like putting together a puzzle with all these different random pieces. So that kind of opened your mind. Like you could actually be creative doing it. That. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I was into it. I was schizo from seventh to eighth. Okay. And, you know, things changed. I feel like things change in Southern, Cal- in Southern California in general. Yeah. After the release of Colors, especially okay. in my neighborhood, because once Colors came out. Yeah. Like all hell broke loose. Like everybody wanted. Everybody to wanted to, to like be a gangster. Everyone wanted to be hardcore, hardcore, <laughs> and notorious. And yeah. They wanted that. They wanted to feel that sense of respect that maybe that that was portrayed in the movie. You know. Okay. So like Crazy D actually later, later like it, later in the year or two after, like I was in junior high, started Underhill Street Boys. So he still went on full on gang banging. Oh, okay. You know, and then they're beefing with other local local gangs. And then I feel like color is really like like that's when people really started gang banging heavy, even if they weren't. And what do you think kept you away from choosing that route? I just never was interested in that, you know? Okay. Like it I I wasn't interested in it. It just didn't really like catch your attention. No, I was much more like in the punk. Like it was more exciting, you know? Okay. But what I did, what I did realize even in junior high is like I went like in one of my classes, there was like a, a young punker as well. Okay. You know, but but he was a skinhead. So they used to like try to make it seem like I was a Nazi. I hear you. You know, and his older brother was a Nazi skin. Yeah. But because like we were like he was in the punk and I was in the punk, like yeah. sometimes they would like use that as a way to like try to jump me. So anybody doesn't know watch it just because you're not <laughs> punk, it doesn't make you racist. <laughs> yeah, I know, but at that time, you know, like <laughs> Yeah, I hear it you. It got kind of crazy, you know. Was it hard to maneuver two things at once because you're you're heavily into the punk scene because that's something you love, right? Yeah, yeah. But then at the same time you have love for what you don't know what to call yet, but it's some sort of graffiti going on. Was it ever hard to maneuver two things at once? No, no, because I wasn't really I wasn't really like I didn't think of myself as a writer or a graffiti writer. Okay. You know, I always noticed the graffiti, yeah. especially going into L.A., like, just looking at all the freeway graffiti and seeing, like, Chrome and Sleaze Up, you know, Whisk. I've okay. seen Whisk, you know, like. And and what uh, led you going from the O.C. Anaheim area to downtown L.A.? How did that come about? Um. Well, I remember, like, you know, in 84, I went to the Olympics. My mom took me out to see okay. one of the, like, the one of the swim meets there. Yeah. And then I... She took me to to the Pantages Theater at the Hollywood. Okay, we, okay. We go out there from time to time. Okay, and that's when and you I would see it. And I would notice all the graffiti in the city and then also on the freeways. But then when I got my license, I think is when I really started seeing, out. seeing the graffiti. Because that was kind of like my vehicle of freedom. So, yeah. you know, it was important to me to have my license. And then that allowed me to get more involved with the punk scene. Okay. And then so I, I, I feel like I probably 
was more wanting to be involved in punk rock. And I, I through punk rock, I became an activism, became okay. an activist, and then I would, I became more of a like a political punk rocker. I got you. you know? So being so heavily involved in the punk scene, right? Yeah. At what point do you tell yourself like graffiti something that you know what I'm really gonna do this? I'm I'm really going for it. <laughs> like that that didn't really evolve until even after I was in high school. Okay. So so like through high school and like in like in the nine nineteen ninety, I joined a band called Resist and Exist. Okay. And so a lot of my energy went to that. Okay. And and we were all about DIY, like do it yourself, punk rock. So Yeah. But then when we started playing shows and I started like meeting other other punks from all over southern california yeah there is like there were some punk rockers that were always at the show supporting us and that i became good friends with that were doing graffiti oh, okay but i never really it didn't really interest me to do the graffiti you know because i like me i was just i want i wanted to be in this band you know i wanted to like, i hear you this happen right but there was like joe like there was joe and ren you know like okay and they were writing you know Joe passed away, but he wrote Jesso from TRM, and okay. like, he became a good friend of mine. And then there was like like writers from LA, from like I want to say from like Bell, Boyle Heights, East okay. LA area that were that were painting, there there that were tagging. Yeah, you know, like there was bands like Gope de Estado. And I thank you for know. sharing for sharing that because I don't think a lot of people understand that the punk community. Mm -hmm. Was still part of the culture, but in their own way. You know what I mean, just because, yeah. just because they were like heavy into break dancing and b boying, it, it shows that graffiti touched more people that that not just hip hop. Yeah, and I wasn't even focused on hip hop. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I remember seeing like Schooly D records, yeah, you know, and seeing some of like the like albums like that and the, okay. and the lettering. But yeah, really, I was all about punk rock. I was all about. You know, I was always drawn to like the hand drawn element of punk rock flyers and and Dope. albums. You know, so yeah. that really is what inspired me. Yeah, because the DIY is, is real. Because I grew up around punk rockers. Some of my best friends are punk rockers, and these guys were putting bleach on their pants, <laughs> buying expensive leather jackets and putting spikes and hand drawing things on them. You know what I mean? Or or yeah. getting the um, the I don't know what it's called to. Um, to floss, the floss. Yeah, the floss. They would make. And then they use that for like to sew their pants and patches With and the patches. Yeah, the and patch the t and the tighter the better. And this is when wearing tight tight pants wasn't cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, the guys now they act like, hey man, you know, the tighter the better. But back then, if you were wearing tight pants, people would look at you like, hey man, what's what's yeah. going on over here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And a, lot, and a lot of like in, all throughout high school, a lot of my friends, you know, like. I became more involved with the punk scene. So, like, I had friends from all over. So, yeah. And then, you know, I would be going to shows as far as, like, Ventura down to San Diego. And then a lot of my friends were, like, you know, they were patch punkers. You know, we, we, there'd be, like, backyard shows. So these friendships that were made um, and then being graffiti writers, do you think that's what attracted you more to star style writing? Um, yeah. I mean, like, I, uh, we used to perform and... With like mind rot, okay. And confrontation would be playing too around that time, okay. And then some of those guys formed Dystopia, and so I remember like Todd and Dino's lettering when they were okay. doing Dystopia, and then that was an influence for sure. And then there was some the punk rockers in Santa Ana. A lot of them were tagging. I remember going with my friend and Andy. Yeah, he wrote Grime at the time. We would go down to the Huntington Beach walls. Okay, you know, but Orange County is very strict on graffiti, so when you know, like if you got busted, you know, that sometimes they'd make an example out of you. So was was there a lot of guy at the Huntington Beach walls? Like when you would go down there to the paint, did you ever meet anybody down there? As far as I, I didn't really meet anybody, but yeah, I kind of more came as an outsider, you know, coming to support my friend that was painting. Okay, got you. You know, but that was pretty cool just to see it like evolve. How was the vibe there? Was it just like a big wall with all kinds of burners or how was it? Yeah, it was just like a wall that was graffiti, you know, and it was, it seemed pretty, I mean, to me, it seemed pretty laid back just being on the beach. Okay. It's, it's always something cool to see, like, a mural, like, that faces. I hear you. I think. You being from OC Anaheim area, did you ever perform or make your way into Coos Cafe? Yeah. So, Coos Cafe came, that, so that came a little bit later. Okay. So, I, I graduated in 1992. Okay. And so, during, so during, my, during my high school years, I went to a lot of protests. Yeah. So, and I always... 
I always wondered why I had to drive. Like I would I would go to Westwood. Yeah. To, to protest at the federal building. Okay. There was times when we would like do a sit in in the intersection or shut, try to shut down the four hundred five freeway. But I I had those visions for like doing that where I live. Yeah. So, so like in I, I want to say in May or June of nineteen ninety two, I um I organized a march against racism. Okay. Where we started at Stoddard Park, which is on one side of Disneyland, and then we marched down Harbor, past Disneyland, all the way to La Palma Park. Okay. And so I did that with the hopes of having all the punks come out and like and participate. Well, a lot of my punk friends didn't show up that okay that day. Maybe because they partied too hard the, the day before or whatever. But there were some b boys there, and then one of the, one of them was Meeks. Okay. Shout out Meeks. Yeah. And so when I met him, and then we like I kind of like he was like, yeah, we're gonna we're doing a show at the Ice House, which was a venue in Fullerton. Okay. So then he's like, come on out to the Ice House in Fullerton. So when I went out there, there was a lot going on. It was like, it was crazy. It seemed like there was about 500 people. It was all hip hop. And it was like, oh, wow. Something new, new to me because I'm used to like punk shows. And like, yeah, it was rare that we would get a crowd of that size, you know? So, so then we slowly started introducing each other to, to our scenes, right? Okay. So then he would tag along with me, the punk shows. I would tag along with them and, and, um, the hip hop shows. Okay, so you guys became friends. We became friends, you know, and then in '92, I kind of had a falling out with Resist and Exist, okay. but I still wanted to perform. So then I started doing like these kind of like avant garde performances. Yeah. And I would crash like these poetry open mic nights, which would happen a lot in the early '90s. Okay. So, so I started finding a voice in that, and that's how we we kind of like I rem- one of my friends' band played at Coos, and at that time Coos was had four owners four people that ran it yeah and it was more like a coffee shop cafe but then they had a falling out and then dennis decided to keep coos and that's when i had the opportunity to like start performing so i'd be performing on them like regularly there well is it fair to say that you were the reason why the the punk and the and and bands were coming in and performing there uh i don't think i'm the i wouldn't say i'm the reason i just I think, I think I think just a contributor, but I think like people, you know, I mean, like with my performances, then they were kind of like, kind of like out there, okay, you know, like really political, but then a lot of antics, you know, like for example, I might go crash an open mic night with my open mic night with my boombox. I hear you. I might come in with some smoke bombs because I didn't have a fog machine. <laughs> Turn off the lights, hit the show, like scream, yeah. spit blood at people, whatever, you know, like. All kinds of things, all kinds of theatrics, and yeah. that kind of broke the ice. I I believe at coups, okay, for performances. But I wouldn't. I think like you know, people, especially when we're underage, you know, like we're looking for a place to have shows. And at you. that time, so before, like I would go to coups, I would go to the Che Cafe, okay, which is at, um, San Diego University, and so coups reminded me of like what Che Cafe was. So I kind of like envisioned coups to be like a Che Cafe. And you like say Che. Che, yeah, like Che Guevara. Did they, they involve graffiti as well over there? Or? Um, the building was painted with a mural. I I believe there was like a Che. Okay, but it wasn't like Kuz where it was like an actual yard where guys would come. No, it wasn't like that. But they would have shows. Okay. And so uh, at the time that we're doing, Meeks was in a hip hop group called Frantic Puzzle. Yeah. And then I was trying to do my performances, but then you know we would go to the Che and then go back and forth. So and you so moved like, around. Oh, I mean, if you wanted to be a part of the scene, you know, <laughs> like you had to travel. So I, I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to, you know, like to me, I always felt like I wanted to be a part of history. You know, yeah. like I didn't want to like learn about history. I wanted to be a part of it. And that was kind of my attitude in high school. So I, I went wherever I could go, you know. like Yeah, yeah, hear you. But but as I'm going and traveling to like different cities, different counties and, and like meeting different people. Yeah. I'm slowly becoming, becoming like influenced or around different graffiti right like santa barbara had graffiti there you know yeah. so you would notice that graffiti you notice graffiti driving down to san diego you notice it in la like one of my favorite venues at the time was jabberjaw off of pico and like man like you would walk in through the back and then i remember there was a piece in the in the back patio yeah. area and i don't know who painted it but it, it was just always there you know and then i go to like the anti-club off of melrose and then there's Melrose, there's graffiti all up and down Melrose, you know, okay. three ways at that time. So you're pursuing, you're pursuing your, your punk, uh, your punk rock, which at that moment, it meant everything to you, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean everything, you know, and I, 
And then I kind of like did my own thing and stopped like being in a, I guess, a traditional band, right? I just yeah. started like performing on your own, writing. Yeah. And then, and then just slowly like meeting people like through Meeks. Yeah. Like we, I remember we met like Dove and Fear from DCV. And, Shout out and, Fear. You know, and just to see the, the synergy between those two was infectious. Like I just, I don't know, like, like the, just hanging out with them too, like yeah. you could just feel the passion for the for the art for the culture. Yeah, and like that that, that really moved me because I don't know. It felt like like if you're gonna be in a band, yeah, you know, you kind of have to like you have to rely on like other band members. You got to schedule in time to rehearse. Like there's all of these things, right? And Definitely. not everyone schedules. Everyone has a different direction that they want to take the band. You know, like. The singer, the other singer at that time, like turned down some really cool shows, you know. So okay. it's like, you know, like you don't have fully have control of of the band, right? It's more of a collective, you know. And and you hope that like it's going, you guys are kind of like in unison and taking it wherever you want to. I hear you, right? But like, but with graffiti, what really interests me about graffiti is like you're taking a name or a word, and you're you're making it your own. You're like identifying with it, and you're building off of it. Like you take ownership of take it. Take ownership, you know, and it's and I, I feel like I mean you can you can have a, a pencil or a pen and you can still rep your name, right? Like 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 it it doesn't take a lot of money. And to, talking about taking it. taking a word and making it yours and ownership, how does Explore come about? Like how do you get that name? How do you pick out the name? Well, I went through different different names, like Nexquizo and Junior High. Yeah. And then I had like political names, like ease right into crime. I would try to write you know, <laughs> yeah. streets of lunatic evaluation. So these were kind of like poetic sayings that I would put up. Yeah. And then I would just try to, you know, and then Meeks was trying to encourage me to like get into graffiti. Yeah. And then I was going to Fullerton College at the time. And then I met Deform from LSD, who later like who, who writes Pang from LSD. Okay. And so it was always just cool to like open up someone's black book and see like what they put into it in the sketches. So yeah. then I just started writing more. And then when it came to choosing a name, you know, like I'm a pretty passive person. Like I, I'm not a fighter. I'm not one to like get into fights. Yeah. But I tend to hold my feelings in. So so when something does push my <laughs> buttons, like I tend to like erupt and explode. Yeah. So that's how I came up with the name explode, you know. So, nice. so then I just kind of expanded on that. And then I know that some people would say, like, X is difficult to, like, to paint or to draw. But I was up for the challenge, and I really didn't. I mean, it just seemed it seemed to fit me. And you also did um, punk rock posters as well. Yeah, like punk rock. And then, I mean, like, that came on later like, when I started getting more, like, I guess more into, like, illustration and, like, drawing, you know? Okay. And is it fair to say that Meeks was kind of like a mentor for you or no? Um, I don't... St- I mean, I th- like mentor. I, I would disagree with mentor. I think we were like peers, you know. Okay. Right, and we were like, if you look at it, I'm like an ambassador of the punk scene, and he's kind of like the ambassador of the Orange County hip hop scene, right? Got you. And so, you know, there and in, in the time that time, like in the early '90s, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of tension, like yeah. socially, right, and politically. I mean, that's when the riots erupted. Yeah, definitely. Right. So, like it felt like you know we were trying to merge different subcultures together and so our our hope was to like take punk and then hip-hop and fuse them together you know and this kind of happened around the same time that like rage against the machine came out okay you know like people either as aslan underground there was like gotcha there was people that were like doing like kind of fusing so two you, cultures. you you're doing you know you're taking activity in, in your punk rock movement you're hanging out and you come up with the name Explore. At what point does CBS come into your life? Well, so so as as Meeks and I started going to coups, yeah, right. That's when we we were introduced to Posh. Okay, because Posh would go there to 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 like he would go to the open mic nights for poetry nights. Okay, and I believe that's when we saw him at one of the poetry nights. Yeah, you know, and then and then when we realized that he was in CBS, it was kind of exciting, you know, because I, I didn't know like anything. I didn't know that many writers from like Orange County, and at that time in Orange County, there was a lot of tag banging going on, you know. Okay. So like, there'd be these crazy battles between EK and WK down the twenty two onto the fifty five freeway. Yeah, you had like I would see Flower SSK, you had D two Ds, you know, like so. 
So that was something I really wasn't interested in getting into. I'm not interested in like beefing it with people. Yeah. So so I was really drawn to like to like Dove and Fear's energy, and then you know at that time I met like Nina from DCV, and then okay. their their crew was more like like close friends, like family kind of driven. Yeah. Right. And then I wasn't really part of a crew. Meeks was like part of ASM at that time, but I don't know if they really did much. Okay. But then when we met Posh, you know, like we started like hanging out with Posh more. And then I remember like he was trying to revive a crew that he started, I think in Santa Barbara, BTP. Yeah. So, so then he asked like Meeks and I to get down with BTP. And at that time it was Posh, Jolt, Olay, Meeks, myself. Okay. And then and Aura. The new wave of the BTP. Yeah, that's kind of like the second wave, but I okay. think it's probably the most active wave, the, the one, the one that kind of put put the crew on the map. On the map, I would say, yeah. Okay, you know, so so that so as we got down with BTP, you know, then that's what kind of opened up the backyard at Coos. That that's where we kind of made it a yard, like a yard. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, like we were going and painting different yards in LA, and that's like how you started getting it kind of snowballed. You know, like I, I kind of <laughs> like I don't know, like. I really enjoy just like that, just that, uh, just having myself to rel to rely on and to depend on as far as like developing, yeah, my craft, right? Okay. And then also, you know, really enjoy the camaraderie that comes with the crew and just like, like I felt like you know the graffiti culture is probably the most unified and diverse culture that I've ever been in. You know, I hear like, you. Like you know what I mean? Like people come from all walks of life. There's all different nationalities, races yeah like there's just there's everything and everything. everything right <laughs> like and then but somehow like we're all able to relate because of this culture right okay. we're all able to like we have like this this desire and this passion for graffiti right and to paint and to like to want to get up or put our name out there definitely right and that's exciting to me like it's a, it's exciting like how powerful like just painting your name on a wall can be you know like and you're hanging with Posh, right? Mm -hmm. And he's CBS, obviously, and you're already BTP. Yeah. I'm assuming he brings you to the CBS guys, kind of like introduces you? Uh, not so much me, but, you know, like as, as BTP started getting more organized and, yeah. and a lot more painting, then, yeah, that's when he would bring on, like, Dell, okay. who, who later turned his name to Shucks, who he okay. had on, right? Like, so yeah. he got down with CBS, Drugs got down with CBS. Okay. Right. Aura got down with CBS at that time, so they were pretty much even Olay was in CBS at one time. And then, then you came in. I came on later. I came on like I, I got down in the crew in 1999. So, okay. so from Coos to that, so much like went like okay. I hear it was you. different. You know, yeah. like like I, I I don't know. I I I really didn't have any expectations for myself as a writer. You know, I just I didn't really think I was even going to be that involved in it. Yeah. But then there was something very special and meditative when I would paint and I really enjoyed it and I liked is I was always up for the challenge to see how I can like how how many ways I could write my name or like how much yeah, how much I could put into it. Right? And so like that kind of like got me more more involved in just wanting to paint more and develop my my name. You know? I was again recognized. So like, hey, you're explode. Oh, no. I don't know. I didn't. I feel like I'm always the one that's getting introduced to people like a hundred <laughs> times. You know? I feel like I'm always in the shadows. You know, yeah. and and I was juggling different things that you know, like during coups, like during those years, like in I would say like ninety four, ninety five. Yeah. In the ninety six, I was like, you know. Just still developing Explode, but also I was doing, like, writing a lot. Of po like, I would write a lot of poetry, act it out in performance, you know? Okay. And then, like, you know, I performed a lot. There was one year where I was performing, like, multiple days out of the week for a straight year. And I would I was known for crashing shows, you know? So I would crash punk shows. I crashed hip-hop shows with my performance. Yeah. And then we also created this group called The Coalition. Okay. Which is more of a hip-hop group. Gotcha. But I was part of that, trying to bring in like DIY aesthetic to it. But then we also had like the Jedi's, like so we had J the Jedi's, which was like composed of like J Rock from the Beat Junkies. You okay. know, it was in there. Akil from NASA crew was yeah. Also, CA crew was part of that. So yeah. like, and then we had Last Man from NASA participating in that, and the Electric Gardeners. Okay. We had DJ Drez like. So what we were trying at that time, you had different hip hop crews like right up north. You had like Hobo Junction, 
yeah project blow there was the good life right so people were there's all these like open mic ciphers so i kind of tag along with that and that also exposed me more to writers and then the hip-hop culture and is there a certain place that uh graffiti took you to where you were like damn i never thought i would be right here doing this yeah well uh, really it was my performance so like through my performance um this one of Pasha's friends encouraged me to apply for Cal Arts in Valencia which is okay. an art school right so, yeah so I submitted a portfolio which was like of my propaganda that I would do for my performances like different flyers and stuff but also some of my visuals yeah some videos and I was I had I didn't really didn't know what Cal Arts was at the time but I got accepted so then from 96 to 98 I was at Cal Arts and so when I went there then I started meeting more writers you know so then I, I met through Cal Arts, I met Boo from AWR, and then from okay. you know, oftentimes like on Thursday nights at Cal Arts, there's gallery showings. So then there's times when like Saber and Chunk, and Push, and you know the Demos Caves would be up there as well. Okay, right. And then there was other other graffiti writers that were there. Like Coke started going there. There was this other kid, and they're all studying here. They all went like well, some of them went to school there, but then. You know, the, like it's it's kind of a pretty liberal campus. Okay. okay. So on Thursdays, there every Thursday night, there's like a like art openings. Oh, I hear you. Right. So everyone knows you. You could go to Cal Arts on a Thursday night, and there's like kegs of beer, and people are drinking and have a good time. There might be some DJs or whatever. Okay. So then I started encouraging my friends just to come on campus, and like take advantage of all of that, right? And then so there was other writers that were going there, so it kind of became like a network. You know that. Another student that I met there was uh, K984 from the C2D crew. So we became friends at that time. And so, like, there, there, there was a lot that went on in those two years, you know. Yeah. So, so I never expected to be there. But then when I graduated from there, like, then I relocated to L.A. And I think that that time I was really more focused on graffiti. Gotcha. You, you know, because I didn't have a car at the time. So I was having, having to take the bus. So I had my options of living in Orange County and waiting like two, three hours to take the bus. <laughs> so I could be in L.A. where yeah. there's like buses running 24 hours, you know. But then when I took those buses, man, it was amazing to see all the graffiti that stayed on those buses that were in rotation from the late 80s. Like, yeah. I mean, you saw there were so many things that I like seeing. I remember seeing a bus where like oil caught scribes on every window of the bus. So, you know, Okay. Like, you the RTD lines. Yeah, you would see a lot of the like scribes still on the buses. And did you ever scribe yourself on or do any type of writing on the RTD lines? I have, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have the you know times where I got to see my name come back to me on a on a bus. Oh, that's dope. You know, I mean, that's why I guess when you when you start to see those things happening, right? Or sometimes you feel like there's times when you walk out of the house with nothing to put up, and then you go somewhere, and then like you're reminded by your tag or stickers. Keep going. Right. <laughs> Got kind of like a little reminder, like, hey, you, you still know, got so, it. So, I mean, that's what I would just be out, you know, like still like trying to pursue like performance, but still painting more and like networking, like just always out there. Being part being part of the punk rock culture and mm -hmm. doing what you believe with this protest and also being a writer and coming from a time where social media was really not a thing. It was kind of like do it yourself, get out there, move around, do what you got to yeah. do. Was it kind of hard adapting to the social media? later on no i don't know i don't think it was that hard you know like i i really like like the platform for instagram because it was more visual right yeah right it's not so wordy and i wasn't at that you know when when social media came i was more visual anyway so yeah i felt i found it to be a good medium to like like be able to post your artwork okay you know because you know i'm i'm very family oriented Definitely. so so, like, I mean, that's my number one priority. So there's times when I'm not going to, like, be able to go out and paint, but there's always time for me to, like, still build and still still draw and still perfect, explode and still come up with styles, you know? And now that you mentioned, brother, that family is very important to you, I want to take the time to say uh, rest in peace to your son, and I, I, I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, I appreciate that. And I know he was uh, into graffiti as well. I mean, I was kind of born into graffiti, born into punk rock, born into like a family of my my wife is Michelle is also very creative. Shout out right? to her. We're a creative family, so yeah, he was around a lot of creativity. Yeah. So I like, guess always there's always. How was that? How was that? Like, having a son, kind of telling you like, hey, dad, I, I want to do like the things that you were doing. 
Um, I really didn't encourage it, you know? Yeah. Like, I didn't really want that for him. Because I know a lot of guys would be like, hey, I don't want my kids doing that. You know what I mean? Well, I, I mean, I didn't want to be the parent having to bail my son out of jail, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I didn't, I really, you know, financially as an art, being an artist is difficult, right? Yeah. So, like, to me, when I think of, of getting arrested or my son getting arrested, it's it comes, you know, it's a price. Uh, like, I I'm, I can't really afford to pay, to be honest. Like, yeah. I'm the sole provider for my family, so... You know, I'm not going to try to encourage him to do something that's going to, like, in the end, cost me money, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so like, I'm not really trying to encourage that. But at the same time, you know, like, I know what goes on in, in the scene. You know, there's a lot of drugs, a lot of yeah. alcohol, you know. So those kind of things, I, I really, you know, like, I'm not trying to, like, throw him in a sea of sharks, you know. I want to see him succeed. I don't want to see him lose, you know. So you got to do your part as a father and just yeah, try, try to, to be there him. as a parental figure, you know, and then try to get him to build, you know, like if he was, I'm not going to encourage him to like, because he, he chose the name Ghoulie, you know, I'm not going to encourage him to do graffiti, but at the same time, I would like, you know, like kind of be hard on him and like, see, like, you know, if this is really a passion of yours and you're going to want to develop your name, you're really going to want to like invest the time to do it. Right. Cause like graffiti, like, there's a lot that go. There's a lot of emotion into it. Definitely, the, being in crews brings brotherhood. Beefs, beefs. Like people are coming from all different walks of life. Some people are tolerant. Some people are intolerant. Some yeah. people have are good with words. Others aren't. So it's like, <laughs> you know, and it's you know, like it's it's kind of sketchy at times. So I'm not. I wasn't really trying to put my put my family and especially my my oldest, like Gavin, into that. You know, like I wanted him to like. I wanted more for him, you know. Was it ever painful though, like knowing that he's outside and you kind of like know like he's out there painting? Was uh, that, it's kinda, I mean, it's difficult. I try not to dwell on it at that time, but yeah, it was hard for me. But I mean, well, yeah. I salute you for supporting him, even though it's something that you really didn't want him doing. But yeah, yeah, you're still yeah. there supporting him and whatever. Well, you, you, you know, he passed away at 21. But when I think of all the things that my son has done, yeah, those 21 years is pretty amazing because there's times. You know, like as a family, we may not go to sport. We're not into sports, but we go to a lot of concerts together. We go to yeah. a lot of art shows. He's met a lot of artists. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible to see all the things that he did in a short period of time. May he rest in peace. Thank you. And CBS, did you take part in like the murals, muralism that was going on there when you well, became CBS? Yeah, so CBS, so before I got down with CBS, I was also in VCK okay. at that time. And then we kind of vibed together. So VCK was composed really of like fume, drunk, yellow, okay. diesel. And I was hanging out with them, you know, and and then they got down with CBS. And then shortly after I would get down with CBS. So I got in like the, I want to say end of 1999. And then shortly after like Rob One would pass away. And then I feel like Did you get a chance to meet like DJ Rob One and Skate or no? Um I did meet Skate at in Boyle Heights at a club called the Chapalita. Okay. You know, I met him through Jesso. You know, that was a, like a punk club off of Olympic. How was I meeting him? I mean, hey, his presence was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> incredible, you know, but yeah, it was cool to meet him. I, but at the time, I, mean, I didn't know it was like infamous skate, you know? Like, you just knew it was like a regular dude. I just, he was with my friend, you know. And oh, he was into the, like the punk rock scene? Yeah, he went to, he was at a show and that was kind of a sketchy venue for a show too. It was okay. crazy right there, you know? Nice. Like it was wild right there, but they they had some punk shows. And he addresses himself as skate at that point. I that I could I couldn't remember. Okay. I just remember meeting him, you know, like, and that must have been maybe ninety one. Okay. Chapalita, I think it was was around in ninety one. And did you know that? Did you understand the magnitude of CBS at the time that you entered? Like, did you know how contributed oh, they were into the graffiti culture? Very much so, you know. Like, I would always notice, like, CBS, you know. Okay. I would see it up, and, I mean, their, their hit-ups are always clean. You know, then you would stumble across, like, like flyers. Okay. Done by CBS members. Yeah. Like, I think CBS is one of those crews that really attracted people outside of graffiti, right? And, like, kind of yeah. people were interested in it, you know. Like, like what's going on over there? Like, I just, <laughs> I don't know. For Like, just especially with, like, Melrose and, like, people really, like, their attention seeing like all the art that's being created in those alleyways yeah. and seeing how it's like developing and how it's like maturing in the 90s yeah and the, and the like the murals that a lot of these artists did was amazing you know like it was it was crazy but it's at the same time like graffiti is infectious right yeah and if you tap into that you know like 
it's hard not to get caught up in all that, you know, and like experience like all that energy. Like that's what I strive for for being exploded in CBS is that I wanna like I want that to can be conveyed in my style and anything that I touch, that that kind of excitement that I would see when I would see like CBS up, you know? It's kind of Not, yeah, just like, you know, like there's the time when you're rolling, you're coming into the city, right? And yeah. you're seeing like you're seeing full color burners on the freeways, you know, you're seeing like like heavens, you're seeing like, you know, when YR was out there, you know, and seeing, full color seeing, pieces. like the big saber pieces, you know, like and seeing what Revoke was doing and what, you know, like like mirror and like and just seeing like like what everyone's doing and how they're creating and like evolving, you know. And That's I know uh, that uh, Express also took a big part in CBS, which he's no longer with us. Rest in peace, Express. Yeah. Can you talk about your friendship with him? Yeah. So Express, I, I want to say like we became more friends like as we entered into like the two thousands. But he was I met him in like in the nineties as well, you know. And like I just knowing that he's also a punk rocker that that was like a like that that was really like how we connected you know and like i can relate more to you, you know, i can relate to and i and i and i yeah. and i could recall some of his artwork too you know like especially with con art and stuff and like and he's such a prolific artist you know definitely another artist that really from cbs that really like recognized me and gave me props would, would be axis you know i remember okay. meeting axis in the mid 90s yeah and like he really like just him at like respecting like showing respect really gave me the confidence and encouraged me to want to do more you know and then knowing that that he he's also coming up in punk rock as well you know what i mean did, he, did you ever take part in connor like did you ever rock the shirt no or? no i wouldn't yeah. connor no. <laughs> i wasn't really in the street where you know yeah like, yeah to be honest like my my the way i dressed back then i would just go to thrift stores try to buy the cheapest thing that i that i think i could rock and i would wear you know i wasn't really like into buying clothes too much gotcha <laughs> What would you say to that 16 year old, 15 year old that might watch this and be like, you know what, I want to get into graffiti? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would encourage them if they're going to take the time to do it. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, like, there's a lot that goes into it, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, and you're kind of opening up Pandora's box, you know, for something, for a name that I didn't think I was really going to carry till I'm 50 years old. Like, I'm, I'm obsessing over it every day, you know? Like, yeah. There's, there's not a, like a second that goes by where I'm not thinking of like explode. What can you know, I do? <laughs> not so much about just getting up, but it's also like I'm always like those letters are always getting manipulated in my brain. They're always like evolving. There's always styles being created in my brain. There's always something that I want to convey on paper. There's always something that I want to paint. There's it's like it's like a curse in some ways because I can't shake it. You know, and you keep it alive. It. I try to the best that I can. You know. <laughs> Do you still keep your eye out to see to what's out there nowadays? Oh, I'm always looking at the graffiti. Yeah, I'm always looking. Is there somebody it. recent that you kind of seen that was like, okay, I see you typing? Well, I mean, it's always incredible to see, like, you know, what the MSKs are doing with, like, going down, you know, or was it? You seen what that guy rams and yeah, rams and you know they're like, hanging from like nin like ninjas, hanging from the yep, <laughs> <laughs> hanging like rock climbers off the buildings, you yeah. know. I mean, just seeing like what merch is doing, you know, like that's yeah, they're, they're, like I like that, you know, like I like to see like I even, you know, like seeing what Anti is painting and just seeing all the homies like painting that like I mean, I don't know. I love like seeing graffiti. Do you ever take it uh, negative if, if you were to run into these guys and they're kind of like, who are you, man? And nobody know you old school like do, do that. Does that no, ever can happen? No, I don't, that doesn't happen. I mean, I don't really think about that. You so know? it's always mutual. I mean, I'm. I try. I, I'm not like. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't walk around with my chest out. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I try to be. Say what? <laughs> I'm usually like in the in the in the shadows. You know. Yeah. I hear you know you. what I mean? But there's like, I don't know. Okay. Like, I feel very like fortunate to be able to rep a crew like CBS. You know how like I like, you know, there was a time when anger like got down with BTP in the mid nine in the like the like the kind of like the mid to late nineties. You know? Oh, so he was BTP. Yeah, he was BTP for a short while. You know, and there was a lot of other artists that were in BTP. You know, it wasn't just Orange County. We just, started just real quick, brother. Before we get on out of here, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people mention anger when it comes to CVS. A yeah. lot of people bring up his name. How important was he to the to the crew? Um, I, th I think he's very important. You know, he kind of carried on the crew for decades now. You know, and I mean, he takes he takes the role of a leader, you know. Okay, and I, I think he's done a great job. Shout out to him for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do. I, I totally do. You know what I mean? Like, there's, you know, he's he's a, he. I mean, I, I he has a presence. You know what I mean? And gotcha. I think that's important. You know, and I mean, he takes 
he makes decisions, you know? I mean. Definitely. Right? Sometimes we could just be de debating for years, but there's got to be someone that's going to make a decision, you know? And that's his part. Right, you know? And it's amazing, like, you know, just to be in a crew and to see, like, all the artists that have come out of there, you know? like And what has become in the contribution to it. Yeah, very, yeah, you know? And just having these, like, these, like, these long relationships with people that I never thought, you know, like we just kind of stumbled into each other, you know, like <laughs> and just through graffiti, you know, different, like, two like whole friends, different people, like friends like Axis, Castle, Crayola, Chooser, like the, the list goes on, <laughs> dude. Simple, you know, like amazing they, artists, you know, like ama ama amazing artists, you know, like even when. Like when the the Lord's crew were down with like CBS, I mean, there was a lot of those artists that like you know that that were chill, yeah. like that were cool that we we all created like a brotherhood, you know. We got one last question for you, brother. Mm -hmm. Before we got out of here, what do you want the world to remember, explore by? Oh, uh, I don't know. Like I like how Shucks like defined me as a styler. I think like a styler would be cool. Okay. Like just trying to develop styles, just you know, but also like kind of like a work in progress, you know. Like my work isn't just like my work is like spread across different genres and mediums, you know. So it's not just like solely graffiti. So definitely. Like and my, also for punk rock. <laughs> yeah, like my body of work kind of like evolved, you know, like yeah, you know. And I mean, it's. <coughs> I, don't, I mean, I guess a, I guess a, in the end, a styler. I a like styler. That, I like that term. Like when they say style writer, you know. Well, again, brother, I want to thank you for, for coming down and giving me a little bit of your time. Yeah, I appreciate it. I highly that. appreciate your time. Thank you for your contribution and everything you've done for the graffiti culture. Is there anybody out there, brother, that you want to give a shout-out to? Oh, yeah. I would love to give a shout-out to my wife, Michelle. Shout-out, Michelle. My children, Ari, Donovan, right? And also Guli, Voorhees, or otherwise known as Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, may you rest in peace, you know, our our family unit, they're always with me, you know, always with me. And they, yeah. like, continue to inspire me and amaze me. But I also want to give a big shout-out to all my crew members and CBS crew and also the crews that I was down with in the past, like VCK, BTP, the OSDs, you know, like, all all of them, all of the crew members that I had in the past and the present have all helped define who I am, and you know, and, and inspired me to, like, want to continue and also to, like, tell stories through my letters and my styles. Shout out to all of them, man, and may your son rest in peace. He's missed down here. And it's always all about the family. I'm about the family as well. Oh, yeah, I can't forget DCV as well, Dove and Fear. Shout out Fear. Shout out Dove, DCV. And before we get on out of here, I want you to check out the Explode deck right here. This thing is sick. It's dope. You can skate on it. I'm happy I grabbed one. Make sure you grab one. Check them out. Hit them up on the Instagram and get yourself a deck. Yeah, we still got a few left, so if you want some, just hit me up, and then we'll get one over to you. And also, make sure to check out GanoControl.com and check out our merch. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's all love. Thank you. Until next time. Peace.